Welcome to Cascade Circuit Simplified. And what I have here is what is deemed a simple Cascade Circuit within its design. So first of all, looking at the circuit itself, we first have to look at the order of operations. This will dictate how the circuit's going to be plumbed and of course how it's going to be drawn. So we have here an order of operation of A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. A representing the uh, pneumatic cylinder, double acting pneumatic cylinder, B as well representing double acting pneumatic cylinder. So what this order, oper order of operations is suggesting is A will extend, then it will retract, then B will extend, and then it will retract. So using cascade circuits, the objective here is you're just utilizing air, no electrical, no other source or other means of shifting valves. So we have to use what we call a, a cascade valve, which is not a valve within itself. It's just one of the valves that are on the board. It could be a 5-2-way or 4-2-way. So looking down here at the bottom, we have a 4-2-way valve. So prior to this video, you would need to understand how to read graphic symbols and how they work when they're shifted. So breaking this down, we have here cylinder A. Each cylinder course is controlled by a directional control valve. So I have a 4-2-way here with a double pilot. This is showing my main source and exhaust atmosphere. Cylinder B as well. We have a 4-2-way controlling the cylinder, right? It has a double pilot, main source, and exhaust atmosphere. Now you notice I have written here A0, A1. This is indicating limits. In this case, we're using hard limits. And um, this, of course, when the cylinder is retracted, it's going to shift A0. When it's extended, it's going to shift A1. Same as with B, when, it sh when the uh, cylinder is extended, it's going to shift B1. So the way this is set up now, the whole circuit within its design is at idle state. It's ready to go. So going back down to the cascade valve, again, we're taking the main source. As shown here, here's my exhaust atmosphere. And I've colored in red source one, colored in blue source two. So right now, when you look at the flow path, your four two-way, source one is energized. And we have to shift this cascade valve in order to get source two to become energized. The um, idea of this, of course, is neither one has air pressure present at that time. So it's either one or the other. And of course, this will eliminate any conflict within the circuit or within its design. So looking over at the start button, I have here a three two-way push button, spring return, normally closed. And if you notice, I have a main supply here. Again, there's your exhaust vent. The main supply here will not cause any issues or any conflicts within the circuit. Some cases you can uh, replace that just by having source one plumb directly into it. At any rate, this will work. So once I push the button and release it, I'm going to pilot this 4-2-way, which of course will shift, opens the flow path up to the blind end of the cylinder, cylinder A, which will extend, and when it extends, it will actually shift the, uh, the limit A1. I placed A1 down here, and if you notice, A1, our supply, is source 1 because source 1 is present at this point in time. So what happens when the limit is pushed or shifted, the, uh, the signal itself will is designed to set up and come over and shift the cascade valve, so now we have energy at source 2. So when we shift the cascade valve, we have energy at source 2. What will happen? In this case, because of our order of operation, we want A to retract. Source 2 is plumbed directly, as indicated by that node, to your 4-2-A. It's going to shift that valve back in the home position and, of course, change the flow path, have A retract. When A retracts, it's going to get on A0. Here's A0 as identified. And A0 is no different than A1. They're both three two-ways, normally close, spring return. This, of course, is showing it's held open because when this is static, what I mean by static, when the, uh, the whole circuit is idle, ready to go, this 3-2-way will be pushed into an open position or shifted. So at this point in time, source 2 has energy. It flows through A0 because, of course, A is retracted. It's going to come over and pilot my 4-2-way, which controls B. Of course, the 4-2-way shifts, opening the flow path to the blind end of the cylinder, the cylinder will advance, and when it advances, it gets on B1, 
And if we look, here's B1 down here at the bottom left. And of course, remember, source 2 is the only source with energy at this point in time. So we plumb source 2 into B1. This 3 2 way normally closed, spring return, can't activate it at all. And that's going to be shifted because, of course, B is extended. So it's uh, depressing or pushing this valve into an open position. And if we look, here's our pilot line, which is going to come out of uh, B1 and shift my cascade back into home position, meaning I'm going to have energy at source 1. So as soon as I do this and I have energy at source 1, if you look over at the 4-2 way, which controls B, source 1 is tied directly to the pilot by means of node connection. And of course, it's going to shift the 4-2 way back into home position. And what will happen is you'll charge the rod into B, B will retract. This all happens relatively quick. This is the, uh, the basis for the circuit. Keeping in mind, this is not the only way to do this. I'm trying to keep this circuit simple uh, within, it, within its design limit the uh, number of components that are being used. So now we step over to our board, and it uh, may be difficult, I guess, to actually see all the colors and where they're going, but I'll try to uh, identify each component. So this is cylinder A. This is your uh, directional control valve for cylinder A, as shown here. Cylinder B, directional control valve that controls cylinder B, which of course is here. My cascade valve, which is right down here at the bottom. So there's the main source coming into the cascade. The red identifies source one, as it does in the drawing. B identifies source two, as it does in the drawing as well. And when we look at this, uh, our push button, which is shown here, the start button, I have it set up that it takes uh, energy from the main source. So here's my main source coming out of my FRL into this manifold. That's plumbed directly into that, which of course it shows here. And this is my pilot signal, which is going to control my 4-2A, which in turn will get A to, the, uh, A to extend. Now when we look at our limits, we typically draw the limits uh, on the board in this manner. Basically, when we consider the limits A0, A1, this is A0, this is A1. B0 is not, is not needed here, um, as shown on the drawing. This, of course, is B1. So with these limits, obviously they have to be here because it's a mechanical component that has to work or correspond with the cylinder when it extends and retracts. But as I said, they're drawn. Uh, this is a common uh, method of doing this, and they're drawn down here at the bottom. And obviously when A extends, it gets on A1. You know, in this case, it's taking energy from showing here source one, right? And then uh, when that happens, of course, we send out the signal to our cascade valve, which is right here, shown in red. And basically, this is what's happening here. Here's your A1, right? We're coming off source one. Here's my signal coming out to my cascade valve, which is right here. Shifts the cascade valve. Now there's energy at source two, which is identified by the blue. And you notice with the uh, with source two here, it's, again, direct to the uh, pilot connection on your 4 2 way for A. And if we look at that, we'll notice it's right here. That, of course, um, in this case, um, what will happen here, A will retract. When A retracts and gets on A0, we look at A0, which is right here. It takes energy from source 2. So if we look at A0 here, here's my energy source. We come out of A0, as shown here, the pilot B. 4-2-A, which is shown here. So that, of course, will shift the 4-2-A, and in turn, B will extend. At this point in time, when B extends, it gets on B1, which is identified here on the bottom left. Remember, there's energy at source 2 here, and we're going to utilize that energy, so we plumb that into B1. So we look at B1, we're coming off source 2, as indicated. right? We come out of B1, here's my pilot line going over to my cascade valve, and of course what's happening here is we shift the cascade valve that's shown. It brings it back into its home position, or original position, which means, of course, we'll have energy at source 1. So this is uh, source 1 here coming out of my cascade valve. As you can see, there's energy there. And when we push the button,
There you have it. Thank you.